All right, we are getting geared up on the vertical mill here to get our hole pattern drilled and tapped in the fireball fixture plate. So what I'm doing, this is something I wanted to share with you. These were given to me by a viewer a while back. It's probably been a few years since this uh, viewer sent these to me. But what these are, are jaws made out of extruded aluminum that actually bolt on to your Kurt style vise right here and extend the clamping capacity further back since they go past your original jaw up this way. And it gives you a little bit higher clamping area too. Now saying that, don't forget that on this style of vise, when you remove your jaws, you can also flip your jaws around to the back side, just like this, and then put this one over here. And you have this clamp area as well. But you're very limited on your clamping surface, so you got about a quarter inch or so. And that would work as well for this, but I've never actually taken the opportunity to use these for a job. So that's what I want to do. I want to get these things bolted in. It's really neat how they, they bolt up to these ribbed sections, and it just everything squares up nicely. So it pulls up against the jaw and down at the same time. So we'll get those things bolted in and then we'll set our fixture plate in here, get it centered up and then get to our drilling and tapping. Okay, so I'm going to use these emery paper strips again in between the workpiece and the jaw there. That'll help create a little bit extra grip and also to protect this from getting gouged from the rough casting there. All right, and then I also want to point out that I tap these things down so that they're square against the tops of the jaws there once I snug them up. All right, that should be good. So we're gonna be drilling and tapping four holes and we're gonna make these holes square with the piece now, even though it's not machined on the side, this has been casted square. So I'm just gonna line up in the center of these ribs right here and then do my offset. And I'm also gonna put two dowel pins in this thing. And on the base plate, it'll actually have the two dowel pins as well. That So when I stick that bottom plate on here it'll line up and then that's the plate that we'll always be able to use for alignment once these sides are machined square and the uh, hole pattern grid is machined in there as well all right let's find center so I'm going to point out that what we have is six inch center on the ribs and that's each direction six inches six inches I'm going to use the digital readout in the half function to actually find the center based off the edge of the castings right here. So we're going to use an edge finder. Making sure there's a smooth spot right there. I've, got, I've also got the quill down onto a stop so that the edge finder goes down to the same place every time since these are drafted. It, depending on where you, you hit that, you may be off a few thousandths. So I'll show you how that works on the digital readout. We're already too close. Just come over real real gently until it kicks off this side. It just did. Alright, let me bring you up top. Alright, this is my Y axis. What I want to do is we're going to zero that, then we're going to go find the other side. just kicked off so this is our total distance that we just moved including the half inch diameter for the edge finder so what we want to do is hit half and then this axis right here and that's going to split it in half 
So then we take this to zero, I'll start moving it back the other way. We take that to zero, we'll be in the center of the part. So that's reading, all right, so that's, that's the center. I didn't have to bring it to center, I'm just showing you. So that is the exact center between this rib and this rib right here. So we're gonna do the same thing on our X axis. We'll do it right here. There we go, we just kicked off. So now we're doing this one here. So we're gonna zero that one. All right, there's our edge. All right, same thing. So now we've got our total distance, hit Y. And then that button there, and that's gonna split it. And we just take that to zero. Even though we don't need to go to the center on this, what that's doing is putting us on a center location in the very middle of those ribs. So now what we can do is work three inches each direction for a hole pattern because we're gonna have a six inch, uh, six inch hole pattern, six inch center to center. We can just work three inches each direction. I'm gonna go ahead and spot in the four hole locations. So I'm gonna do those first and then we'll do the, the uh, reamed holes for the pins last. So we're on our three by three for our first location. All right, there's our four spots. Now we'll go ahead and get them drilled and tapped. All right, let's go ahead and get them drilled. First thing I'm gonna do is set a depth on my DRO up here. I'm just gonna touch the bottom with the drill right there. And then uh, from that point, we're gonna go down another seven eighths of an inch. All right, so we've got our, our quill DRO. So I'm gonna zero that right there. And then we'll just take it down to 875. one drilled so I'm just gonna go around the plate and get all four of them drilled I'm chamfering them too since the drill is going up to the bottom of the inside the drill and stop and I can put that back in there and repeat my hole location every time. Getting into our hand tapping, I'm going to use this Fisher spring-loaded center. And this is what keeps the, the tap straight in line with the spindle there. So I'll just put this up in the drill chuck, and that'll hold that. Using my good Greenfield half-13 taps with a Greenfield tap and die number five tap wrench.
All right, well, I don't have the air on right now. I'll turn it on after we're done so that we can uh, make sure all the chips are blowed out of them holes. So there's the first one. Looks good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our two reamed holes. It's gonna be right here, three inch centers for these three eighth dowel pins. These are hardened dowel pins. So my plan is to, you know, we're gonna make the plate that's gonna to mount to this. And hopefully I'm gonna have these where they'll lightly press into the plate. And then these holes will be reamed three eighths. And so the theory is that these are gonna be uh, more of a slip fit so that whenever I take if I ever have to take the plate off, I can loosen the bolts and pull the plate off. And then these are off out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and ream two holes right about there for our dowel pins. Just going to spot it in and then we'll get our drill. All right, we're going to use the 2364s. So we're, we're just going one size, one drill size under 3 eighths. Uh, this should be around, I was going to say 359. So that'll give us approximately 15 thousandths to ream out. That's a brand new Cleveland drill. Should work really good. I'm only going to go about half the, these are three quarter inch long, so I'm going to go about three eighths or just a little over that to provide clearance. We're just going to split the length between both holes. Using my quill DRO up here to tell me where I'm at. That was just a touch over. Let's go ahead and give it a nice chamfer. All right, I'm going to go ahead and suck those chips up. Reamer I'm using is a 3H reamer. This should be uh, 0.375. And then on my, I've got a 374 up there. We may use that for our, uh, the other plate. I don't have a collet to fit this shank. This is a little bit under 516, so I've got to use my chuck here. But this chuck, this vertex keyless, always runs nice and true on uh, if you got a good tool in there. I'll have to work. That should have been it right there. I felt it touch the bottom. I don't like to dwell in the bottom of a hole or create more force downward cutting on the end of that because it actually makes the, the reamer walk and cut oversize if you do that. Looks like it's going to be a precision fit. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to go with it because I can tell that it's going in there, but there's no clearance, so you would have to bump it in there. I don't have a 376 or even a 375 and a half reamer. So I'm just going to stick with this, you know, and, and we're just going to, we're just going to make that work. I retract my last statement. I forgot that I had this whole set of cutters in here that I've 
been stored in my patio to get them out of the way. And there's a lot of metric in here. And then look at right here, reamers. 376. Yeah, I got one. I'll grab a few of these and take them out to the shop and actually uh, verify them that they're 376. And we'll use one of these to ream that hole again. It appears to be 376. All right, that should be a good one to use right there. Looks like it's got a good grind on it. And we'll go with that. All right, here we go with our 376 reamer. That's the fit we wanted right there. All right, I like it. All right, we got the same, got the same fit. Is that one thou clearance? All right. All righty, well this part of it's done. So now we can go ahead and move on to our plate that's gonna bolt on there. 